are uh, in this edition of the quiz on magnetism. There are 10 questions involving mainly two or three concepts. The first one is talking about a current of 10 amperes flowing in a wire in a direction of 30 degrees with respect to the direction of a 0 0.30 tesla magnetic field. Find the magnitude of the magnetic force on a 0 0.50 meter length of the wire. So you have to find the force acting on a current carrying conductor kept in a magnetic field and the formula for that. So that's the magnetic field and that is the conductor carrying current. The angle is 30 degrees the strength of the field is 0 0.30 tesla and the formula is b times i times l sine theta and all those numbers are given and when you substitute those you get the answer remember theta is the angle between the magnetic field and the conductor which is 30 degrees in this case and you get 0.75 newtons the second one talks about a stationary proton in a uniform magnetic field of 0.20 tesla what's the magnitude of the magnetic force when a charged particle enters a magnetic field the force acting on it is actually given by the formula Q times VB sine theta where Q is the charge of the particle, V is the velocity, B is the strength of the magnetic field and theta is the angle between the velocity and the direction of the magnetic field. In this case uh, it is a stationary proton so the velocity is zero therefore the force is definitely zero there's no force acting on it in the third one uh, we have a high power line carrying 1000 ampere generates uh, what magnetic field at the ground 10 meters away now we have to calculate the magnetic field due to a straight conductor at a certain distance from it and the formula is B is equal to mu naught by 2 pi I divided by D where D is the distance of the point from the current carrying conductor. Remember that mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 and now you have that divided by 2 pi times the current which in this case is 1000 amperes divided by 10 meters and when you do all the calculations you get 2.0 times 10 to the negative 5 tesla and that's the answer number four an electron moves with a speed of 5 times 10 to the 4 meter per second perpendicular now perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field of 0 0.20 tesla What's the magnitude of the magnetic force on the electron? We've used this formula one time. Force is QVB sine theta. Because it's moving perpendicular, theta is 90 degrees. Electron charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. The speed is given as 5 times 10 to the 4. The magnetic field is 0.20 tesla and the angle is 90 sine 90 is 1 and when you do the calculations you get 1.6 times 10 to the negative 15 newtons quite straightforward takes us to the fifth one a proton travels through a potential of 1 kilovolt and then moves into a magnetic field of 0 0.040 tesla. What's the radius of the proton's resulting orbit? Now understand that when the proton moves through this potential of 
1000 volts it picks up speed it is accelerated so using that information first we need to find the velocity of the proton and after we get the velocity of the proton we can find the radius that it makes when it enters the magnetic field now to find the velocity we know that the kinetic energy of the proton is equal to E times the voltage make velocity the subject the charge of the proton is the same as that of the electron which is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 and the voltage here is 1000 volts mass of the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27 doing all that gives 4.377 times 10 to the 5 meter per second that's moving quite fast okay now to find the radius in a magnetic field the formula is mv by qb and now again mass of the proton times the velocity that we uh, have calculated this number right there divided by the charge times the strength of the magnetic field and you get the answer 0 0.11 meter right there number six a similar question a beam of electrons is accelerated through a potential difference of 10 kilovolts before entering a velocity selector okay so from the first given potential difference of 10 kilovolts as we did in the previous problem we can find the velocity so let's do that first but after we do that we have to remember that a velocity selector is an arrangement where you have a magnetic field and an electric field in the same space and as the charged particle passes through that space the electric field tries to deflect it in one direction and the magnetic field tries to deflect it exactly in the opposite direction now if the deflections are equal and opposite that means the charged particles will go straight through so that's what you mean by a velocity selector now keep that idea in mind this this is actually the formula for force due to a magnetic field this is the force due to an electric field and if they are equal and opposite then we can put them equal as we did and cross out the Q's and make velocity the subject uh, from which we can rearrange in this problem you're asked to find the value of the electric field now from the potential difference as we did in the last problem we can find the velocity obviously I've speeded it up a little bit because we're doing the same thing it's an electron that's why we have the mass of the electron here and the velocity comes out to be 5.9 times 10 to the 7 meter per second and after you get the velocity plug it into this equation we know the velocity and uh, the strength of the magnetic field is given so it's 5.9 times 10 to the 5 volt per meter brings us to the seventh question a doubly charged helium uh, I'm sorry where did I get the helium from a doubly charged ion with velocity 6.9 times 10 to the 6 meter per second moves in a path of radius 30 centimeter in a magnetic field of 0 0.80 tesla in a mass spectrometer what is the mass of this ion 
important word, doubly charged. That means it has either lost two electrons or gained two electrons. So it's to do with two electrons. That means its charge is twice the charge of an electron. And we know that the radius is given by mv by qb. Mass, therefore, is given by this formula. The charge is twice that of an electron. That's why we have 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19. And all the other terms are given. This is 11 times 10 to the negative 27 kilogram. That is the mass of the ion. Okay, eighth one, a proton has a speed of 3 times 10 to the 6 meter per second in a direction perpendicular to a uniform magnetic field and it moves in a circle of radius 0 0.20 meter. What is the magnitude of the magnetic field? Now, how many times has this concept been repeated now? Radius is mv by qb. Center of the magnetic field. You have the mass of the proton, the velocity, the charge of the proton, and the radius. All quantities given. 0.156 Tesla and just this word it enters in a direction perpendicular uh, is important because it's only when it enters in a perpendicular direction that it makes a circular path so that's why we've been able to use this form ninth one a circular loop of uh, area given carries a current 5 ampere the coil lies in a horizontal plane with the current flowing in the counterclockwise direction when viewed from above. And at this point, the Earth's magnetic field is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 4 Tesla, directed 60 degrees below the horizontal. What's the magnitude of the torque which acts on the loop? This problem is important, but uh, there is something that uh, we have to remember that now shows the loop with the current flowing in the counterclockwise direction and that is the magnetic field which is given as being how many degrees is that 60 degrees below the horizontal now remember that whenever we do problems with a coil the angle is never taken with the plane of the loop that the angle that's given here which is 60 degrees is the angle with the horizontal which means it is the angle made with the plane of the loop right but you always have to take the angle that the perpendicular drawn to the loop makes with the magnetic field so I'm going to draw a perpendicular to the loop here and then that angle is definitely going to be uh, six I mean 30 degrees because the other one is 60 so that's 60 degrees. The formula for torque is NIAB sin theta. NIAB sin theta. That's the formula. It is a direct application, but the thing is, you have to be careful about the angle. Okay. Number of loops is 1 here. Current is 5. Area is given. 0.25. Strength of the magnetic field is so 1.2 times 10 to the negative, how much is that, 4. But instead of putting sine 60, we're going to write sine 30. What's the reason? Because you got to take the angle with that line, with the perpendicular drawn to the loop, not with the plane of the loop. That's why the angle is 30 degrees. So saying that one more time, the angle theta 
is not the angle between the loop and the magnetic field. It is the angle between the perpendicular drawn to the plane of the loop and the magnetic field. Brings us to the last one. Two long parallel wires carry currents 20 ampere and 5 ampere in opposite directions. They are separated by 0 0.20 meter. At what point between the two wires are the contributions from the two wires the same? So we're looking for a point between these two conductors carrying currents in opposite directions where the magnetic field due to them will be equal. Okay, so that carries 20 ampere. This carries, the second one carries 5 ampere. Definitely the point where the magnetic fields will be equal will be closer to the 5 ampere. Don't you think so? Because it's a smaller current. So I've taken that point and this distance is taken as x. Therefore this distance is 0 0.20 minus x. The formula for magnetic field due to a straight conductor is mu naught by 2 pi i by d. So since the magnetic fields are equal at that point, I'm going to say mu naught i1 by 2 pi d1 is equal to mu naught i2 by 2 pi d2. Cancel off uh, some other quantities. 20 by x is equal to 5 by 0 0.20 minus x because that's the distance from the 5 ampere to the point. Now cross multiply collect all those similar terms and 4 by 25 which is 16 by 100 0.16 meter from the 20 ampere wire. So those are the answers to that quiz. I uh, hope you use that and prepare for the exam. Thank you.